Hello and welcome to this video for the setup of the Delta X counter surveillance system. Thank you for choosing the Delta X. Firstly, install the software and wait for the drivers to set up on the computer. After the software has been installed, connect the USB cables. Make sure that the main thick USB 3 cable is plugged into the corresponding USB 3 socket of the laptop. The other two connectors can be connected to any USB ports. Insert the supplied lock into the case to avoid accidental closing of the upper part of the case. If your laptop screen is no larger than 14 inches, you can place the laptop inside the case. Make sure the USB cables are not excessively bent. Use the supplied angle adapters if necessary. Position the cables along and behind the laptop. The excessive length of the USB cables can be hidden under the front panel. Now start the Delta X software. Make sure the software recognizes the connected device and shows the corresponding message. When the Delta X is run on the computer for the first time, it will ask you to perform the calibration and to specify the country of use. Do not connect any antenna to the input and press the perform calibration button. Wait for the process to finish. Select the country of use. The Delta X is supplied with a number of data files containing information about the frequency layout in different countries. By selecting the country, you will inform the Delta X what mobile and wireless frequencies are used in the area and what the local assignment for TV broadcasting is. Now open the bands page and check if the table has been filled. Preparation Updating masks Mount the ODA4 omnidirectional antenna on the upper part of the case and connect its cable to the input socket on the front panel. Now you can update the masks. By masking the safe broadcasting and communication signals, the Delta X avoids false detections and is able to identify the local dangerous signals quickly and from a significant distance. The procedure of updating masks is simple and lasts just a few minutes. The mask should be updated no closer than 50 meters to the room which you are going to check. It can be done right in the car before entering the building or in a neighboring building. To achieve the best masking, select a higher floor when possible and position the antenna near the window. When another building is inaccessible, select a higher floor in the same building or the most remote room of the same floor. Put the system or the antenna on the windowsill. Selecting the most remote places minimizes the chance of accidentally masking dangerous bugging signals present in the target area. Press the update masks in the menu. You will now be offered to select a log to store the masks. Logs are databases that contain information obtained during a detection. The Delta X supports unlimited number of logs. Each can have any number of dates. It's a good idea to create a log for each new location where you perform bug sweeping. Later, when your work is repeated in the same location, the old and the new information can be compared. Select an already existing log or create a new log for the pending detection. If the log already contains the masks, the update is not obligatory, but it is recommended. Select the time in minutes according to your needs. The longer the time you select, the less false alarm rates you will get during a subsequent detection. Such non-constant signals, such as remote controls, local radio communications and wireless devices have more chances of being captured and masked with a longer time. Press update and wait for the process to be completed. While the masks are being updated, the entire Delta X system or its antenna can be moved slightly in order to achieve the best reception of the background signals. The add point button allows the operator to add more measurements in order to improve masking and decrease the false alarm rate. You can perform any number of additional measurements around the target zone. Please follow the recommendations about the distance. Detection. 
After the masks have been updated, you can now enter the target zone. To avoid false detections and to sustain a high sensitivity, turn off all sources of radio waves existing in the area of detection. Put mobile phones into the flight mode. Turn off Wi-Fi routers and cordless phones. Mount and connect the ODA4 antenna and start the Delta X software. Choose the RF sweep mode in the menu. Select the log and make sure it has updated masks. Press start to begin your detection. In a few seconds, the detection will start. It is recommended to deactivate the audio alarm at this stage. The left part of the main window displays the signals table. Each signal is assigned its own level of danger. The signals table has a filtering feature and can show all of the signals or just the dangerous signals. The signals are split into two categories, common signals and bands. Mobile and wireless signals are shown in the band section occupying the bottom part. All other common signals are shown in the upper part. The common signals are assigned a danger level depending on by how much they exceed the mask. The danger of bands is determined based on a threshold. Each band has an individual threshold which can be adjusted on the toolbar. To open the toolbar, click the header or the arrow button. The threshold of bands are set automatically to low levels, meaning there is a high sensitivity. In many cases, it might be necessary to decrease the sensitivity. For example, when an identified wireless device cannot be deactivated. If the source of a signal is located, identified and proven to be safe, its threshold can be increased. Here we have some DECT cordless telephones in the surrounding area producing danger. Let's increase the threshold to set the danger to zero. When the Delta X or its antenna approaches a new DECT device which is closer, its signal will exceed the threshold and we will have an alarm. Open the Spectrum page on the right side and double click the DECT signal in the Signals page. Double clicking automatically adjusts the displayed span of the spectrogram. Open the toolbar and increase the threshold while observing it in the spectrogram. Set the threshold just above the existing signals. Now the DECT signal is not dangerous. Our local Wi-Fi sources have been identified and are safe so we can increase the thresholds to avoid detection. Select the Wi-Fi 2.4 by double-clicking it and moving the threshold slider up while watching the decibel level on the spectrogram. When the threshold is higher than the decibel level, the danger level will drop to zero. Repeat the same with the Wi-Fi 5 gigahertz. As for GSM bands, now these signals have a very high decibel level. Therefore, it is recommended to set higher thresholds. Typically, 60 to 40 decibels can be enough to limit the detection distance to 3 to 6 meters. Let's set higher thresholds for GSM 900 and 1800 MHz. When adjusting mobile bands, operate with the uplinks only. The uplinks represent the signals sent by the mobile device. The downlinks should not be changed so often. Now we have readjusted the thresholds of all bands and have no danger. Let's reset the peak dangers accumulated during the trial detection when our thresholds were too high. In the context menu, select all signals and press reset danger. Let's activate the test bugging device at a distance of three meters. Turning on the transmitter, the Delta X detects a new signal near 275 MHz.
As the signal is being captured and the measurements are accumulated, the system starts showing the signal's bandwidth more precisely. If a transmitter creates a number of records in the signals table, these components will be merged shortly. The results of detection can be reviewed. One, in the signals table, the red danger bar graph shows the high level. Two, in the detector, the general level of danger for all signals is shown here or in the locator. While the signals table lists all the signals which have created danger, the locator shows just the currently dangerous signals. The centre of the circle represents signals with 100% danger and the edge with a level of zero. When the transmitter is being approached, its level of danger grows so it shifts on the circle closer to the centre. The locator simplifies the location of a transmitter. After a dangerous signal has been detected, it can be located in the signals analyzer mode. Select that mode and make sure that the suspicious signal is selected by double clicking it. Change the position of the delta X or move the antenna using the extension cable from the supplied kit. As the antenna is moved closer to the transmitter, the danger level will grow and the signal shifts to the center. Please note that 100% danger can only be reached by the strong wideband transmitters like Wi-Fi, 3G or LTE. Simpler VHF or UHF radio bugs will create less of a level of danger, typically between 50 and 80%. Correspondingly, their position on the circle might not be in the center. Now let's return to the RF sweep mode. Let's start the detection again and see how GSM, 3G and LTE bugs are detected. The mentioned standards can be used both as audio bugging and hidden video surveillance. We activate the device with the SIM card and see the high level of danger is shown by the mobile band. By double clicking it in the table, we can review the spectrum. Let's change the distance to the transmitter. The signal's decibel level and the levels of danger change. The changing level of danger can be seen in the locator. Again, the signal analyzer mode can now be used for a better reaction and a more convenient physical location.